the inspiration for the new novel is, is kind of hard to point to because you never, um, the thing with me is I, I'm never aware I'm actually having an inspiration and it's later that I recognize that that was a germ for something that I'm currently writing. So that for this novel, for, for, this, for my second novel came in the spring of 2003 when I was actually in Kabul just before the Kite Runner was published. I spent two weeks in Kabul and while I was in Kabul I met a lot of people and many of them women and children. I met a lot of little girls, little boys, and, and a, a lot of women. And I spoke to them. I know you can, one of the things in Kabul is you could just walk up to people on the street and start talking to them and just kind of learn about their life, what they've been through. And I remember meeting these women and hearing their stories uh, of what they'd gone through during the time of the Mujahideen infighting, during the Taliban years. And I was speaking to them just to, just to learn about what had happened in my country because I'd been away for 27 years. And I remember seeing these women walking down the street with their children and thinking about, you know, what is their life like? What, what are their inner thoughts? What are their inner, inner lives? You know, do they have hopes? Do they have dreams? Um, are they disappointed? What, how do they feel? And, um, and when I sat down to write uh, my second novel, I started thinking about those women. And, um, and, I, and I can't say that either of my main, two main characters in, in Thousand Splendid Sons were based on any of those women per se, but they were based on the kind of the the collective spirit uh, of, of all the women that I met in Kabul uh, in the spring of 2003. So I used those experiences to, to kind of create these characters and intermittently I, I dipped into the stories that I had heard uh, to, to create a convincing environment for these two women. The heart of the story is about their friendship. One is um, um, a poor um, villager who lives in a remote area of Afghanistan. The other is the smart, educated daughter of a school teacher who has high hopes for her future. And at the heart of the novel is, is how circumstance and fate and tragedy brings these two women together and how their lives intersect and how these two women grow and how they become very, very intimate, become um, very close and, and the relationship involve, evolves into a, a mother-daughter relationship and, and it, it's a story about friendship, story about commitment, story about self-sacrifice uh, and family and, an, and a longing for, 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 for acceptance and, and belonging. And the background is the upheavals in Afghanistan which in many ways shapes the lives of these women and so there's a chronicling of the political uh, upheavals in Afghanistan beginning with the Soviet invasion um, going through the, the Civil War, the Taliban, and all the way into the post-9-11 uh, era. My, my upbringing in Kabul, I have nothing but fond memory of. I mean, I grew up, I had a, the good fortune of being raised in Kabul during a very peaceful era. This is before the Soviet invasion. So I have very fond memories of growing up in Kabul. Uh, very uh, rich life socially, had a large extended family, a lot of family friends. So we. You know, I had a slew of cousins and second cousins and friends and, and that kind of thing. Our life revolved around being with people and, and, and interacting socially with others. Um, and Kabul at that time was a fairly thriving cosmopolitan city with kind of this, this active cultural and, uh, and intellectual life um, to which my family kind of belonged. So it was very different from, from the image that Kabul, um, right, you know, that, that the images that people think of when they think of Kabul today. And even back in those days, in the 70s, when I was in seven, eight, nine years old, I'd begun to write stories. And so reading and writing was with me from a very early age. I was raised in a very literate family. My, my folks could recite tons of poetry. They were raised around a lot of, a lot of classic poetry. And so they, we always had books around the house. And I was an avid reader as a child, both the, the, the the, the Farsi literature and poetry that I read, but also later translated novels that I, I read in, in Farsi. And I began writing at a, at a very young age, like the little boy in my first novel. I uh, began writing short stories, small plays that I would then quote unquote produce for my brothers and my cousins and we would kind of stage them for, for friends and family at gatherings. Uh, so it, it played a very central part in my life for as, as, long, as, I, as long as I can remember. Um, and so I, I was a writer long before I decided to go into medicine later. I, I wrote uh, The Kite Runner uh, while I was working full time. Um, and I kept working uh, long after The Kite Runner came out for a year and a half. So I had no intention of quitting medicine and, 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 and becoming a writer. 
but the demands of the two careers became too heavy and eventually I had to put one on the back burner. Well, the funny thing about the Kite Runner is that it really was kind of a slow builder. It was a, a word of mouth success and, and, uh, and, and I kept working full time um, or almost full time for a year and a half after the Kite Runner was out. And eventually it reached that tipping point and people and I started spotting people reading the book in public on, you know, on, on airplanes and that kind of thing. You know, there's been so much said and written about Afghanistan, precious little about the inner lives of the, the people there living in that environment in those conditions. And maybe after reading this novel, people have a little bit more empathy for what happened to Afghans, particularly Afghan women. Who, who really, really, I think, suffered the most out of, out of everybody in Afghanistan, especially um, in the last 15 years.